Greetings, fellow hobbyists. What's up? How's everybody doing? Today's an exciting day because... Oh. What? What? We're getting double audio. How are we getting double audio? Uh-oh. Sorry, everybody. Do you have the stream preview open in a window? I think so. It's just me. I'm dumb. We got it. We got it fixed. We had a, a little... We're just double checking everything. That's all it was. <laughs> That's all it was, but... Uh, it is paint day. Kickstarter is live. We already have some backers. Make sure you check it out. Spencer will have the link available that he can drop in the chat for everybody. Make sure you know exactly where to go. But we are excited. We are 13 backers in according to my Kickstarter page already. And we're only a couple minutes in. Actually, two minutes in. So that's pretty awesome. And we are excited. Make sure you check that out. We don't have uh, like it pulled up on this screen to, to review. It'd be a little bit trickier for us to pull off immediately. We have to do some last minute changes. But everything is there that you need to know. I hope uh, all the info's there. We worked really long and hard getting all of that done. Spencer and I painting countless corn of ears, a bunch of different miniatures and all that jazz. You know, of course, we've been working with the paint for quite some time. So we're gonna fix the audio. What's going on? It's a little quiet. Does okay. it mean we move the mic? It's this. Oh, oh it was moved. So uh -huh. Someone was in the room and moved it. <laughs> We're going to figure it out, people. I promise. That's fine. Is it? Oh, it's not even plugged in. I don't think, is it? Okay, we're getting somewhere else. Let me see. Well, hold on. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Technical difficulties. Is it any louder now? Oh, yeah. We're good. Is this better? Is this cool? Do I sound uh, a reasonable volume? I think it sounds, yeah, we got a thumbs up. We got a thumbs up, okay. Yeah, there was a gremlin in the room that we just didn't think to look at the mic, so. Okay, well, you know, whatever, here we are. <laughs> we got it fixed. Uh, if you have any questions about the paint or anything like that, drop them in the chat. I, I can answer pretty much all of the questions uh, that I know the answers to, which is pretty much all of them. So, but we're really excited. Make sure you check it out. Prices are available. All of the jazz that you would need to know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Twenty backers in. Super excited. We're looking good. And yeah, so we have uh, the final version of the paints, the bottles, everything like that. Here we can show off as well. Uh, and we have a bit of a cool sculpt that I'm going to be fiddling around with today using the paints. Uh, this is something that may be available soon to you as a backer. Uh, I am in the dregs of working on it, trying to get it done in time, uh, among everything else. But it is our couple of firsts, okay? Whoa. So it is our first bust, and it is our first sci-fi miniature so we we showed uh, a version of this sculpt off and then we decided previously and then we decided to turn it into a bust and that is what we are rocking and rolling with today so if you want to hit me with that top down view oh boy oh boy so you can see here wherever we are let me know if the lighting is okay if everything's bright enough for you uh if you can see everything i can make adjustments as needed but you can see the work in progress on Ruben, our, our, I don't think, is it crustacean? Is a, I'm, I'm painting him sort of like a blue crab or shrimp. And then you can see he is in a, a full robotic suit as well. And uh, you can see he's got like an apron on. He's got some, some condiment bottles all the way around. You can see his awesome uh, armor there, the color and the chipping, all the stuff that's going on. He has some flair. Uh, he's got his little work towel, and then he is also holding, I know I showed this off as well, whoa, a platter full of food. Look at this. Ruben works at a restaurant, so you can see that here. I'm leaving it off uh, for sanity's sake as I'm working on it, obviously, because this takes up a lot of room, and both I'm painting separately, but this is sort of my uh, fun project. Obviously, there's a ton of paint jobs on the Kickstarter page that we're all a part of preparing for the launch of the Kickstarter, showing off different application methods, everything like that. But this guy is sort of the last coup de gras of making something crazy, colorful, and really exciting. But so this is Ruben, our first bust, our first sci-fi mini. He is a, a 
robotic crustacean alien waiter super awesome uh the sculpt that we've shown off previously is a little bit different because it's supposed to be a gaming miniature and we decided to blow him up and make him really cool so i'm going to be fiddling around with this we don't have a palette cam today just because i want to have enough room to show him off in general um i do have a palette here i mean if you guys if it's not going to drive you crazy i can literally work like this as well so either way uh but that is what I'm going to be fiddling around with. So if you have any questions on the paint, anything like that, we're going to be using it today. Uh, I am going to grab colors to continue work on his apron. I'm going to be using, let me see, that's warm black. I would like cool black. I'm going to grab our tan and probably, let's see, uh, I'm going sort of purpley. So I'll grab this sort of magenta here. This is violet number three. Oh, oh psyched oh. you out. I psyched again, sorry. Psyched you out, but so we, these are the colors we're going to be using right now. Violet 3, which is a warm tone. Cool black, which is a cool tone. And our tan, which is uh, a very light uh, warm tone. But So these are the ones that I'm going to be mixing to work on the apron. Uh, a lot of the work done so far on the bust has been mostly airbrush base coat, and then everything else is by hand. Obviously, the chipping, the weathering, all that jazz, the freehand. All of that is by hand, and uh, yeah, we're just having a good time. So we got a couple questions. We've got some questions. Hit me with those. First, uh, is this going to be an add-on? This uh, the bust is the bust going to be an add-on? So uh, yes, most likely it'll be available very soon. We'll probably do an update for it as it becomes available. What's nice is you can just go back, edit your pledge, and add it to your pledge if you would like a copy of him. Uh, I, I am just rapidly trying to finish uh, painting it as fast as I can without compromising the exciting quality in which uh we're trying to achieve so um but yeah that was the whole idea that we could offer uh something brand new we've never done before and that would be a fun bust so again like i said uh we're using cool black this is one of the features of the paint line right is the built-in color theory you can check out a whole section of the color theory on the kickstarter page i did a write-up explaining uh, sort of what's going on there and then there's a video of me mixing some of the paints giving you an example exactly what to expect uh, With the color theory so that way you can kind of tell like oh, that's what it means when you know, you're mixing this color that color whatever whatever so uh, but yeah Second question uh, People are asking about brush licking with the paints which we never endorse Yeah, I don't endorse brush licking but the paints are non-toxic so if you are stuck to bad habits, you'll be fine uh, previously, we didn't have the full breakdown of what was in our paints, so we were just erring on the side of caution to tell our reviewers, don't lick your brush. Uh, but yeah, it, it is fine. We were, it is confirmed that they are, they are okay if you decide to eat paint. I don't think it is a very smart idea. Um, and then, of course, if you are airbrushing anything like that, uh, definitely use a respirator, but you should be fine if you have bad habits. I'm just not on Team Brush Licker, so you, you will never catch me being excited about Team Brush Licker, but... It should be okay. Question. Uh, we've got, are the paints ready to go out of the pot or were they made to be thinned from first? So you can see what I'm doing right now is zero thinning, uh, and I'm probably just going to be applying it directly uh, immediately. So you can use them out of the pot. I always recommend adding a little bit of water. I usually add the water that is just in my brush to get it ready to rock and roll. Um, I, I don't think really, like, I'm not a fan of paints that you're just supposed to use out of the pot. Uh, so... I, I always recommend thinning it, but you can, depending on what you're doing. Um, the paints thin super incredibly well. Uh, we've been using them for quite some time here, so we are very familiar with what to expect out of that. Um, but yeah, it's I usually just mix it with whatever water is already in my brush. So, but good question. I'm actually going to add a little bit of cool white to this because I just mixed the exact same color I was using. So I will just move right along. A lot of the paint jobs that you see on the Kickstarter page itself, by the way, um, were painted not really mixed on the palette. So I just tried to do as much direct painting as I could out of the bottles. This bust is a little bit different because I'm obviously doing a lot of palette mixing. Um, I wanted every example to be as true to just like using the paints without any sort of advanced skill, so to speak, in terms of like you know, uh, just really utilizing our base features like the color theory and all that jazz. So hopefully um, that resonates with people. But yeah, I'm just going to continue sketching on his apron here. 
bringing up the values. I kind of want it to be this weird, warm, purpley gray tone, and then I'll glaze a darker color on top as I get closer to like my final tone, so to speak. And I'm just using wax parchment paper. That's what we use here all the time. It's the same example on the Kickstarter page uh, in the color theory section if you scroll down. And if you want to see how the paint can be applied in multiple ways, there's also a really easy video, a quick video. They're all, all under three minutes. Uh, there's a video of us applying them on white primer, black primer, uh, as a contrast style on top of a, a very uh, strong white base coat. And then what it kind of looks like dried with a little bit of varnish. Give you a better idea. So I know that stuff is hard to visualize. All the tournaviers that you see on the page uh, in front of the bottle graphic as well, we did that. We also have graphics on top of uh, black primer applied by brush we were going to share uh, as like an update through the campaign so you can get an idea if you're somebody that paints directly on top of black primer how your life will fare with that it's really nothing crazy it looks really good it's not that difficult so I know that people were excited to see that we were just going to show straight up what it looks like on minis because a lot of uh, paint lines don't do that so we have another question of if mixing teams are going to Yep, so we're gonna have agitators in the bottles. Um, we also confirmed, because of the consistency of the paint, we know that like uh, a more recent release of paint had an issue with the agitator bottles actually clogging the paint. If you tip them upside down, uh, the consistency of our paint, you'd have to hold the bottle there for quite some time before that was ever a relevant issue. So no worries with that, we're not gonna have any clogs. So, But yes, you will have a mixing agitator. All right, so this is the this is the zone that I'm in trouble in because I glued the arm on. <laughs> so I'm trying to paint up underneath. Uh, your mileage will vary if you end up working on a Reuben of your own. I, I thought I was being clever and not gluing the giant platter of food on, but I probably also should have left the other arm detachable. But. Do you know what the agitator is made out of? It's going to be stainless steel. So it'll have heft to it enough to do everything you need. I know some companies use glass beads. Um, some use like lava rock bead. Uh, but we're going with the tried and true. And then how much paint is uh, in the bottle? Every bottle is 20 milliliters of paint. So pretty much standard to what you're used to. They fit in all paint organizers that you'd be used to. Everything like that as well. So. Price-wise, we are very competitive to the other high-quality, high-pigment brands out there. And better, I would say. Duh. 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 Obviously cheerleading. We had a question. If there are any videos of paint being used in the contrast style? Yeah. Uh, so, like I said, if you are on the Kickstarter page, go to the application video. It's two minutes long. You will see three different colors applied in the contrast style as well as just regularly uh, as you would um, base coating and then what the contrast style looks like when it's dried and we also applied a little bit of varnish so you can see that it's an under three minute video super easy uh, but we, we plan on streaming during the course of the campaign so you know most likely like today we're working on Ruben just for fun um, tomorrow if you would like we can prep something and do purely contrast style painting with the paints as well so you can get a good idea about that. But there are examples on the Kickstarter page. Uh, the Games Workshop uh, Death Guard minis that I painted, those are done purely as washes with no additional layering. So that, that should give you a direct idea. The MCP mini, the Battletech mini, uh, I believe the there's another paint job on there that are done in a mix of contrast application and regular painting. So I tried to do as many direct application styles. If you read the captions of every photo, I tell you exactly how I painted them. So it gives you an idea of the base coat, the technique, and all that stuff. But good question. Do we have any inks or anything like that in the works for later on? We don't have any inks or anything like that. We do have some additional lines. We've talked about it multiple times with our... Uh, Patreon people, so it's not a huge secret. We have fluorescents that are literally ready to rock and roll. So you may see them, depending on how the funding goes, in terms of 
uh, development happening faster. And then um, we obviously plan on things like skin tones and metallics and stuff like that. You know, we wanted to release this sort of uh, essential palette because really it is everything you need as a painter uh, to get the, the wide range of things available that you, you know, are able to do for projects or anything like that. Um, but like I said, we are, we are already working on uh, super, super bright fluorescence and uh, some metallics and other things too. So um, inks really aren't something that we've looked into necessarily because we believe the paint strength of the contrast style application, meaning just applied as a wash, the pigment is so strong that you get the same result that you would want out of an ink. You also, if you tint through an airbrush like I've done uh, on this bust already, you also get the same effect as the vibrancy of an ink through an airbrush. So. Uh, you know, maybe someday we work on it for people that really, really like inks. Uh, but otherwise, the the product does what you would want from an ink in general, unless you have a very unique way of utilizing inks. So, but good question. These are some solid questions. Solid questions. Helping me out. Do what? They're helping me out. Helping you out. Okay, cool. Yeah, I get to sound intelligent to you. Wait, what? He's trying. He's trying. We're here. But so really, I'm just sketching a uh, texture into his apron currently, and then I'm going to start glazing it down and then building it back up. And somewhere in between those steps, I will get it to a point where I go, that's a cool apron. And then I stop on the apron. We have another question about any mediums or utility type products coming out with the line. I think so, you have an opinion. Yeah, so the, the entire line was created to where all you need is water. Um, if you are someone that paints with mediums, by all means, you can continue to use them. It's not going to react in a bad way. But the quality of the grind and the quality of the pigment that we are using and the amount of it, all that jazz, you literally only need water. Uh, if we were to make a medium, it would be because we have a different product that would require something like that. But no, uh, we... Do not need mediums or anything like that at all. Uh, it was specifically designed to be perfect with water. But again, if you are someone that is used to that, uh, you can still use it. It's not going to affect you in a negative way. And how would you say that these paints um, work with an airbrush? They work great with an airbrush. Make sure you use a thinner respirator. You're good to go. Uh, the gradient that you see in the green uh, armor so far, right? That was airbrushed super fast on top of Xenothal because of the amount of pigment this literally went on top of primer so like this intensity is just one just literal pssst, little coat and you're good to go so it the they are they are super super uh, strong whenever you're using them through an airbrush do we have any metallic paints planned yep we do have metallic paints planned they will be following the uh Similar structure of the built-in color theory with color temperature, so that way you can have a cool gold, warm gold, cool brass, warm brass, you know, whatever. We'll be doing it that way, so. And then, when does this Kickstarter end? When does it end? In 13 days. We're doing a short Kickstarter. If you notice, the delivery time says July. Uh, and that is because, literally, we put in the order, we're ready to rock and roll, they get it to us, and that's it. So, this is... This has been a lot of work and planning to make it the fastest possible turnaround and delivery. So this is gonna be ready to rock for people before Rivenstone hits, everything like that. We want people to be able to use our paints for all of the other projects that we have involving miniatures uh, in general, so. And here's another question. Um, how deep do we plan on kind of going into the paint category in terms of like brushes and palettes and um, I mean, you know, I think the, I think Chris, our CEO said it best, uh, you make a product when you answer a problem. So if we feel like we're answering an issue for like a utility tool or something like that, then we may make something, um, in terms of brushes, obviously we would have to find a good partner the same way we have an awesome partner for producing this paint. So, you know, whatever we end up making, we're not just going to try and do like throw away like rebranding drop shipping style products uh it would be something that we actually want to invest time into to make sure it's good so hopefully that answered your question um i don't think anything's off the table but because of high quality uh the paints are and how much thought we've put into the paints that would have to happen for anything else we release so 
Carl asked if there will be more streams during the campaign. Yes, Carl, there will be more streams during the campaign. Hope you're doing good, for Carl. For you specifically. Wait, for who? For me? For Carl specifically. Yes, yeah, yeah. So I am now going to start working with a little bit of our red zero. It is a cool tone red. How do you make a cool tone red? So it is not super warm. It has a lot of colder notes to it, and I'm going to start mixing this into the color. I already have mixed, so I can glaze on top. What are some of your favorite paints in the range? Some of my favorite paints. Uh, our red-brown, I think, is the best color, period. Uh, but a runner-up would be... I know Spencer has different colors, but... So my favorite is red-brown. I think it's probably the best utility color out there. Cool black and red number three. The, these are my favorite paints in the entire range. And that's it, don't at me. Uh, there is no arguing, there's no discussion. These just are the best. Uh, but Spencer, what are what are yours? I also like orange four, I'll be fair. I like orange four. We swapped the number, but. The oh, right. <laughs> I forgot we, we inverted the color, yeah, yeah, here. So yeah, red three, orange one, cool black, and red brown are my go-tos. I love all our greens. I the greens are good. To put, they paint on top of each other really well. You don't really have to mix. You don't want to. It's just flat. Yeah, our range of greens worked out to be really good in terms of layering. There was, you know, in the, the trickiest move, uh, so when I was mixing the pigments, right, I was making sure to do different base pigments. So even the difference between green three and green four um, you can see they're pretty similar, but the the intensity of the saturation and the amount of yellow coming from the two pigment mix in this one versus the two pigment mix in this one makes all the difference. So you can see on Ruben here where it goes from a solid green to this like really intense neon green. So the difference between like the end of the arm here to this are those two colors. So even though they appear similar in terms of the amount of brightness that you're looking at, the saturation is what's going to shift your use of that color. So like layering directly from green zero to green four is a really fun experience just because of how I was able to mix them in general. So it's another good question. You were kind of talking about addressing problems to make products and someone said, what do you think this paint addresses? Like why would we come out with this? Yeah, so you can look at my answer to that question directly on the Kickstarter page. Uh, not only do I have an answer for why we think this paint line should exist in a world of other paint lines, but also why it's good for new painters and why it's good for experienced painters. I took time to answer both of those things. Um, but the, the short version of all of that is not only is the, the shortest answer possible is the quality. So all of the tricks that our paint can do is because of the quality and the amount of pigment that we're offering. Um, if you compare our paint to Chimera, if you compare our paint to the Scale Artist series, if you compare our paint to uh, AK, the grind of the pigment allows us to do a lot more where all of those other paints end up falling short. Uh, either they don't have the same utility, they don't dry the same way, they have color shift, or there is a huge learning curve in terms of consistency, like with Chimera. Uh, if you are a a newer person in the hobby or someone that has always used traditional hobby paints and you move to a heavy body pigment, there is a huge learning curve for you to figure out what's going on. These paints don't have that. So we essentially solved three-ish issues uh, that all of these different sort of ranges have. And the reason they were solved is just pure and simple quality. So um, it is exactly what I've always looked for based on my method of painting. And I think that because things like Slap Shop and Speed Paints have become so popular now, uh, it it allows people to really get that utility and grow as painters because these paints can be used in so many different ways. So hopefully that answers your question. But again, uh, we answered the question on the Kickstarter as well. We knew that people would ask that and there's no reason for us to not answer it because uh, we, we literally believe these paints are super awesome. So this is a science question. Do we know the storage temperature? Storage temperature? Uh, well, so they do 30 cycles of freezing and thawing. Uh, for the paints and there shouldn't ever be an issue. So I wouldn't put them in your freezer, but uh, you should be cool in most normal temperatures, right? I mean, I would assume 50 to 80 degrees are gonna work just fine all the time, so.
but yeah they do a lot of freeze testing so we shouldn't see anything crazy in shipping depending on where you live but yeah you don't need to keep them in the fridge that's for sure uh, will the paint be available at retail or on our website when i need a refill in the future yep so we'll be able to do that in the future um you know our funding level is not only the funding level for us to be able to fulfill the orders, but it also gives us the ability to bring stuff to retail relatively soon. So assuming all goes to plan, we've got you covered. Uh, we don't, we obviously we're not offering individual pots of paint in the Kickstarter uh, because that just breaks down all of this. It, it essentially breaks down all of our minimum orders and our sets. So once we're able to deliver the Kickstarter and then start selling everything else on our own, you can you know sample individual stuff uh, at some point too but we just aren't gonna do that during the Kickstarter. But good questions. A lot, of, a lot of smart cookies in the chat today. My laptop died, so I actually don't know where we are at in funding. I can actually, I'll bring it up on my phone too. So I can. Monitor. If you want to go to the face cam, people people can watch me pull out my phone. This is a professional technique. First of all, the hot dog hat is crucial. If you don't have the hot dog hat, sometimes looking at Kickstarters don't uh, load as fast. So definitely keep that in mind. Okay, uh, I think I had it up. I know. I'm sure everyone loves this. Do you guys like this? Is this good? This is the content you asked for. This you look just... beautiful. Thank you. He said I look beautiful. I know I look beautiful. My mom says I'm a handsome boy, even if I'm husky. She didn't say that last part, but maybe she did. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Okay. Once I get this up, I won't have to bring it up again. I'll never bring it up again. You said 13K. Okay, so we're almost halfway funded. We're 33% funded. That's really exciting. We've been live for 30 minutes. You guys rock. Pump up those numbers. Make sure to share this with a friend. Get all of all of your, your painting homies involved. Look, I'm getting trapped in the Kickstarter page. I'm just like, this looks so good. It, it's exactly what we wanted Look to show off. Okay, so I got to get back to work. But I'll leave this uh, right here so I can keep seeing what's happening. Okay. What's been your favorite model to paint with these paints? Favorite model to paint with these paints? Um, you know, how do you pick your favorite child? I'm very partial for different reasons to the Adrax Agatone paint job is really sick. Uh, it was really fun to paint. The Battletech Turquina was fun just because I felt like I was painting an artifact out of a museum. And uh, the Archon, the Cruel, was fun to paint because that was the first thing I ever painted using the paints. I think it worked out pretty good. So, um... But yeah, everything else was, was cool. I, I liked, uh, you know, all of them, I suppose. Is that a fair answer? I don't know. I think that's fair. I don't know. But my glaze is dry, so I'm going to go back in. But good questions. Are you dropping the link in the chat for people to spend Oh, yeah. Here, I'll drop it again. Let me know if I if I, we have any homies in the chat as well. You know, some of my painting buddies say they hop in there, but you don't know who they are. <laughs> and so they say crazy stuff. <laughs> I, everyone's a homie. Oh, what a good answer. He These said, are all homies. Everyone's a homie. Down the line, when, you, uh, when we begin to offer singles, will we have things, will we order this line with a, with a paint wrap? With a paint rack, um, I mean, we might produce one in the future. Again, it's one of those things like if we just want to sell a branded one, that's cool. We design them to fit with everyone's paint racks in mind, right? So they will fit any dropper style paint rack if you already own one. If you don't, you can surely wait. We do have, uh, you know, like a laser cutter here we could do. But in a world where we're trying to deliver this by July for, or in July for everyone, uh, we didn't want to then have to laser cut if we get a thousand backers, a thousand, you know what I'm saying? Like that just, 
immediately makes it uh, a slower process than what we were aiming for. So, But I don't see why we maybe wouldn't at some point. But they should already fit with anything you may own if you already own something. So. Oh, he means retail stores. Oh, yeah, we're going to do it. Yeah, so, yeah. so uh, we've already talked about um, for retailer pledges, uh, like a retail... Uh, like tabletop rack right because we we're not gonna have we don't it doesn't really justify like the big standing rack that some brands have because we don't have like 200 SKUs. if we expand we may make a bigger one we've also discussed ways to do uh the hue boxes stuff like that that we offer so um but yes uh we we have discussed it the last big meeting that we had we talked about racks directly and we found some solutions so uh don't worry about it we may uh end up doing like an update specifically for for retail backers and contact you about what plans may be so if you are a retail backer, yes, we may do that. And does our paint work well with other paints? Our paint works so nicely with other paints. Uh, the way that I would describe it is it's like MSG for other paints. So like if you have, you know, if you're using a, an, an unnamed brand and you're like, you know what, this red just isn't giving me enough coverage. I need more coverage on the red. I want it to be more brilliant. It needs to be brighter. Add a little bit of our red too into it, and boom, now it looks amazing, right? It's a little bit of seasoning on top of your already, uh, you know, already used and loved paints. So, um, but yeah, they accent other other brands, lines, whatever you want. They don't uh, do anything strange. So, you know, there's no like binder in it that makes it to where your paints don't work or anything like that. You should be totally fine. Every every painter's got a toolbox, and this fits in your toolbox without issue. Carl asks, "Can I paint a hot dog hat with your paint?" You can paint a hot dog hat. Um, I can switch to painting a glizzy at any given point in time. Uh, for those that have joined late, I'm working on our first bust and our first sci-fi sculpt ever. This is Ruben. He is our alien crustacean waiter. You can see his giant platter of food here. We got three burgers, giant rack of ribs, and a bunch of French fries that I am painstakingly painting with like semi non metallic metal reflection. A big old glizzy hot dog and a nice root beer float, I'm assuming. Uh, but yeah, I have that just not glued on because it would be very difficult to paint. So if, if it is required of me to start painting a hot dog, I can switch at any time. No worries. You can definitely paint a hot dog hat with these paints. Classic, classic Carl question for sure. Paints I'm using right now are our tan, warm tone tan, warm tone violet three, cool tone white, cool tone red zero, and warm tone violet one. yeah any additional questions you may have he's just talking about snails feel free why is the chat talking about snails? you guys are not allowed to have conversations i'm not a part of that i feel feel left out i have the kickstarter on my phone so i'm not like trying to pull up the twitch chat if i have to if i feel like you guys are conspiring against me i will but i said something nice about you and shit what'd you say i'm a nice guy a cool guy <laughs> yeah you're a nice guy Okay. I like the laugh that you added. That really it was nice. Really sends it home for me. <laughs> okay. We have a question directed at you. What's your favorite thing about snails? What is my favorite thing about snails? Um, I heard they're really good in knife fights. So that's a snail fact. Shout out to our Patreon members because they got a whole video about raptor facts one day. They may have not super real. Yeah, they may have not signed up for the Raptor Facts, but they got a whole video about Raptor Facts. So Oh, I think Will's in chat right now and people were trying to say snails in Rivenstone. Snails and okay, well if Will's in the chat, he can manage his own madness. <laughs> I'm gonna post this. Snails and I thought it was supposed to be bees. He has a thing with bees, right? Snail and stone. Snail and stone. What? Yeah. What if they're like snails that have like stone? That would be cool. Like crystals growing out of their shell. I love all these ideas. I'm gonna go push that at lunch today. 
Yeah, let me know how he reacts. I'm sure he'll like it. He likes all my ideas. That is true. Everything that he says, Will's like, that's a great idea. You're so smart and handsome, Spencer. <laughs> it's a very positive work environment. We're all very supportive. Give lots of compliments. We're almost to 20K, though. Very exciting. 120 legends backing the Kickstarter. We appreciate you. We're not even an hour in. That's looking awesome. So is your paint job. What? Are you trying to get something out of me? I'm just trying to compliment you. Oh, trying to, oh, sorry, right. Yes, I'm totally used to Spencer complimenting me and not bullying me all day long. So continuing to go in and texture. I would zoom in further, but literally I want him to stay in frame otherwise we're going to get in like the seasick land of being out of focus and someone was asking if they think we could do an iridescent color scheme with our paint an iridescent yeah if you are good at non-metallic metal you can do whatever <laughs> you would like in terms of iridescent um in terms of like color shift paint they are cool i am not a big fan of them personally and i've talked about this before so it's not like you know saying a hot take but you can't really shade with them or highlight on them without killing the effect. So they are cool. I own two different brands, and I have used them in different classes that I've taught, stuff like that. They just sort of are restrictive for me. I, I literally painted a, a Necron army using color shift paints with the iridescent effect, and unless you were looking at it from, like, the right angle and then also they were moving, you, you couldn't really tell I used them. So it's kind of... They're, they're kind of tricky, but. It's cool for like tabletop type stuff. Where yeah. You're trying to get a cool effect quickly. Yes, we don't have any metallic pigment mixed in with our paints in the Essential palette, so. Would be tricky. I did do an iridescent non metallic metal, though, with the uh, Dung Beetle Knight from Kingdom Death long time ago a couple years ago four four or five years ago four years maybe three four i don't know time flies you know when you're having fun yes Woo! have more fun they call it have more fun yeah more than right fun. than right like right now uh-huh okay how do we have more fun right now spencer says we're not having fun boo boo no, in the chat boo in the chat to spencer he says we're not having fun I said, let's have more fun. Oh, more fun. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. We're at like a, a 7 or an 8. I want to go to like an 8.5. Okay, Spencer said we need to go to an 8.5 or 9 on the fun scale. If that means I have to shift to painting a glizzy, by all means I will. Uh, but I'm liking what's happening on the apron in terms of the texture. I know it's kind of hard to tell because it's a little bit uh, shiny after my, my big wash. But Carl says draw a smiley face on your glove. <laughs> oh, one of those? Here. We can do that. I, I didn't bring my gloves from home, so I'm like in a giant glove, and it makes me really uncomfortable. But let's do one of the let's do a high Carl, just for you. Make sure it's nice and even for me to write on. Uh, oop! It's also really hot in this room, so my paint is drying on me instantly. We didn't want to turn the AC on, though, in case it, like, made too much noise. Hi. we. And then, what, you wanted a smiley face? So, like, one of these? One of these guys? Just for you, Carl. All right. Now the fun is here. Now the fun is here. We did we did the high Carl smiley face. We had a question about when we'll uh, see samples of fluorescence. It's gonna be hard. Um, it's, we have them here, <laughs> so we don't have them in uh, these bottles yet. But we have the final production of all of the fluorescence. 
Um, they are really hard to get on video, but they're easy to photograph. Uh, I know we've shown them off a couple times on camera. So actually, spoilers, uh, I'll go ahead and spoil it for everybody. The Archon paint job. So if you're on the Kickstarter and you scroll down and you go to the color theory section, or if you just look at the header image, the dragon's glowing eye and glowing necromantic energy was done in our fluorescent green. So even though it is not part of the essential set, they exist. So we're ready to produce them as well. We are just getting the essential set out into the world first. So, but we love them. I know Spencer is like just as excited about the fluorescents. They're really, really cool. They're awesome. You heard it. He said they are awesome. And you can do a lot with them too. I think that's the cool part. If you want to do something fast, it's as simple as base coating it white yeah. and painting it fluorescent. It'll look cool. There have been multiple times where we paint eyes by just washing the fluorescent on top of white and they look really good. So, good little speed trick. I could do it on this guy's eyes too. I kind of want them to be like a mantis shrimp. I had wanted to do him more of like a mantis shrimp, but then I realized like his body is already green with orange accents and mantis shrimp are typically blue with like orange and green accents. And I mean, that's just pretty on the nose if I'm doing that on everything. So I figured maybe not that. It was part of the plan and now it's part of the past. Jared was talking about uh, coverage examples, uh, which I think we have on the Kickstarter. Yeah, so if, you, uh, if you're if you on the Kickstarter, go to the application section. There's a two minute video. Uh, you can watch that. It's applying on a base coat of white, black, and then contrast style application. We're also gonna do an update. So on the Kickstarter page, you'll notice there's uh, where we show like every single color, so right at the beginning. And then there's a painted miniature next to each one. Those are actually the contrast style because they're a little bit easier to read, like the, the range of tones that, that you would get. Um, but I also did a version hand brush application on top of black primer, and we'll share that out in an update as well at some point so you can see uh, what it looks like with a couple of coats directly on top of black with the lighter colors and everything like that. So it was important for me for this Kickstarter to make it as like realistic for painters as possible there are lots of different uh, you know, paints that go into pre-order through Kickstarter that have amazing box art, but they like aren't showing you or telling you what exactly happened. And so that's what we wanted to do, was make it very easy to understand for painters and speaking our language, right, uh, what you can expect, so. But good question. And then fluorescents, are they also non-toxic? Yes. Everything, everything that we have developed so far is non-toxic. We just, Initially, when we sent them out to uh, testers, we, we didn't have the full, you know, chemical breakdown, safety, all that stuff. And so to be sure, we told people, we don't know if they're non-toxic or not. They're not non-toxic, so we're not sure. And then now we know for sure. So they're cruelty-free, no animal products used, no animal testing, good to go. Vegan-friendly, we had somebody ask, and yes, they are. We are very excited. You know, I think the most exciting part about the Kickstarter, you know, for me, uh, isn't you guys getting the paint. It's me being able to order multiple sets for myself. So <laughs> that's, that's, that is what uh, I know that we are excited about. Um, Spencer and I were lucky enough to get a set for home out of our testers, but having one set of paints that don't exist yet is not as exciting as going, oh, now they exist. We can use them. Uh, Aaron Lovejoy, one of the painters that we sent the pet paints to for feedback, it was really funny because uh, when I was talking with him, he he was doing a live stream with me and, and testing each paint, asking questions. And one of the things that he said, he was like, I really love this color, I really love this color, but the hard part about it now is that I know I can't use them, right? Like he didn't want to run through them and not be able to get them. So that is what's exciting for us is we know we will have paint because, yeah, there are plenty of projects I have going on at home that I 
haven't really messed with because I know I want these paints and not have to feel like I'm like using something that I shouldn't be using yet. So, so it's a conflicting feeling when you're developing anything. What about you, Spencer? Are you excited to have paint? Yeah, I guess. No, I'm just kidding. He said, yeah, I guess. <laughs> no, I love this paint. I've been using it exclusively at home. Um, it's completely changed the way I think. It's, it's cool. I know it sounds cheesy, but... It's probably... So he was probably really quiet, because I know he's off camera, but he said that he's exclusively been using the paint. He loves it, and it's changed the way he paints. Take that... Take that testimony for what you will. I know it has changed the way I paint, so uh, like the stuff that we were working on here before we started using our paints versus the stuff we do now looks completely different just because of the level of saturation. So Now, one, one corner I've backed myself into is this is shifting more into that grayish purple area, and then obviously his fanny pack is purple. So I think I'm going to shift the fanny pack into, well, his skin is blue. So we have orange, red, purple we have some yellow what could i shift this to maybe like a dark green like an olive drab that looks nice it's also low on the model too i know it's hard i just don't know like i don't know i'm, I'm running i'm you're watching me in real time experience what i always experience working every day <laughs> where i'm like am i backing myself into a corner what am i doing so I'm not entirely sure what I should do about the competing colors. Maybe make it like a maroon here. That's what I'll do. Because the only red currently is the arm that you can't really see uh, underneath the platter when it's there. So I'll just glaze our red, z uh, yeah, red we zero. We have a recommendation. You can paint it snail color. So, okay. Uh, Haley, Haley Snaily says this. Ah, what's up, Haley? Yeah, we'll do snail, snail red pouch here for you. We'll make it like a deep maroon snail. Or B color. Or B color. Well, maybe. Right now I'm on Team Snail, so. All right. And because it's so hot in here under these lights, the glaze is going to dry immediately, <laughs> which is nice. So yeah, I'm going to have. a cool example right here, though, about talking about saturation. Like, look at what that glaze just did. Yeah, and I'll do it one more time. I'm pretty much going to lose all of the highlighting I had before, which is already under some glaze, so I'll have to rebuild it in some shape or form, but not too too concerned. I paint so thin anyway that like I'm not going to create texture or anything like that. Um, that is one of the big bonuses about how thin the paint is. Shout out to James Waffle. Jim was very impressed with... Uh, how thin the paint can get without breaking. And you know, you know, he is the oil master. So him working with our paints on his Patreon recently uh, over the past couple months or, or, yeah, I think two months at this point, right? Um, he definitely was impressed. He liked the contrast application. He thought that was really cool. Obviously, Craft World Studio painted awesome community, uh, Games Workshop community minis that were featured using our paints, the Dante and Lion. They really enjoyed the application of the paint, how it doesn't shift when it dries. I will quote the most amazing quote out of any of our reviewers so far. Aaron Lovejoy said, it's amazing how these paints just work. <laughs> I, th I think he, he, he said, they just do what you want. And if you paint a lot, uh, I know that sounds like a silly statement, but it is true like when you work with these there is very little surprise in between the mixing the application and the drying like it does exactly what you would want it to do every time which is cool let me see i'm checking my phone we're at 143 really cool people already backing the kickstarter if you haven't checked it out we're live right now we went live 51 minutes ago very exciting stuff. I'm going to mix uh, in some tan here. What is the dry time on a regular coat? Also, how hot is it for you? Because I'm going to face 110 this summer. Oof. 110, I mean, that's not that bad. Um, as someone that came from Oklahoma, I, I, I know the struggle. 
Um, dry time in general is normal. Like there is no, it's not any slower really than uh, regular paint. And the amount of water you add in obviously adds more to the dry time. But I did a complete glaze on top of the pouch there a second ago. And you can see where it is directly wet and then where it is dried. So nothing really out of the normal there. Because of the way the pigment lays, uh, you actually have a little bit more workability, which is cool, um, depending on what you're doing. So, so yeah, I hope uh, you've enjoyed us hanging out. We will probably try and go live every day. We're just going to keep showing around this time. We'll probably do it from uh, 10 to 11 every day. And... Uh, Tomorrow, since somebody requested it, we'll do a contrast style mini. We'll do application on top of white so you guys can see that in action. It may take a little bit because obviously you have to apply it as a heavy wash. <laughs> so we're going to do some some hanging out in a watching paint dry quite literally. But I think you guys will be impressed with the result. I can also show off all the torn of ears that we painted in general uh, for all of the photos and stuff showing off the color application give you a better idea that's kind of the best part about this like we were i i especially was very very adamant about showing everything true to a painter meaning you know the tournaviers that we did on top of black primer if some of the black primer still showed through a little bit on one of the colors versus another like i wanted all of that to be visible because it doesn't detract at all from what we are doing or the quality of the product right it's all about literally showing you exactly real world situations that you're gonna get every single day so and uh i don't think anybody else has really done that yet so that that for me was a big point of importance here's a question any idea on shelf life till the pop settle in um i'm not sure so like when they shipped to us i mean okay well let me look over here real quick i'm gonna Go all, way off camera and, and reach. Nothing to shake doesn't solve though. Yeah, so like, uh, this is one of our tester bottles I haven't touched in a long time. So you can see the difference here. Uh, this is what, our brown? Let me look for our brown. So just here's the difference between the bottles. So these were our top secret testers and the final. Kind of hard to see. But right here, it has settled. And so you just see the actual bottle, meaning the paint has just pulled away. Um, but there's no like medium on top or anything like that. Um, and just give them a shake before you use them. That's it. That's all you got to worry about. So the uh, agitators that are going to be in the bottles will handle that for you just fine. But yeah, if you are a very, very infrequent painter, just shake the paint. It'll work out. Give it a little shake. It's a good question. We had mentioned earlier, somebody was asking about uh, like temperature uh, stability, I suppose, was kind of the main gist. But yeah, they do 30 freeze and thaw cycles on all the paint and everything like that. So let's say you want to buy more paint from us and it's in the middle of the winter and it's going to be like negative five outside where you live and you're afraid because some other brands notoriously uh, go bad if they are shipped in the winter. Um, ours should be fine. So no need to worry. We're, we are our, our production partner are some true legends in the game that have produced for a lot of different well-known companies. And we were able to work with them to make something that even they were excited about making, which is really cool. So they definitely understand what we are going for with their paints, which is exciting. All right, let's see. See where we're at on time. Okay, so I would say if anybody has any any questions, we're gonna be hanging out for maybe five more minutes. So get them in if you can. Make sure you check out the Kickstarter. We will be back tomorrow at the exact same time. Uh, as requested, we will do some contrast application uh, live on video so you can see how all of that works. It'll just go directly on top of white primed miniatures. So. Nothing, nothing really crazy, but uh, I think it's really cool to show off. It works really well. Everybody that has been able to try it so far has been impressed. So, um, even Murray from Tabletop Time 
it was funny when he was trying it he was applying too little paint if you guys have watched that video and then at the end he was like oh i was apply like when he did it on the base he applied way more and realized oh you're supposed to put a lot of it at once so um but yeah if you have any other questions drop them down spencer will read them to me it's some nice love from the chat Nice love from the chat. Okay, well, I appreciate you. Man, we are 1,000 away from being 50% funded in an hour. That's really sweet. 154, actually, just as I was reading that, another person backed. 154 legends, true, amazing hobbyist painters. Hit me with that that face Camerino. I want to I wanna speak to the people. Speak to the people. Speak to the people. Uh, what do I do with my hands? You just keep them there. Yeah, it looks good. That's the shot. What if that was the shot? I feel like, uh, what was the uh, Guillermo del Toro's, what is it, pan with the the pan dude with the, with the hands? You know what I'm talking about? The monster yeah. with like the... He's got eyeballs. I don't, unfortunately, so I can't really cosplay correctly. You look like a mime. Is that how that works? I'm trapped in your screen. But anyway, we are super excited. Paints are live. We have 156 legends that have already backed. Make sure you check that out. Spencer can drop the link in the chat right now. Do it right now, Spencer. I'm doing it right now. He's over, well, he's over here, but there you go. So link should be uh, dropped for you one more time. We will be back tomorrow. Same time, same place, same very handsome face. You know what the deal is. Uh, we will do contrast application tomorrow. If you have any other suggestions for things that you would like us to show off on video over the course of the campaign, by all means, <coughs> excuse me, do so. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. We appreciate you hanging out. I hope you guys are excited. We are super, super excited, uh, especially seeing all the people hopping in already this early. And unless there's any last second questions. Do we get to see Hungerford tomorrow? <laughs> Do we get to see Hungerford tomorrow? Uh, we can rope him in here. We can make him paint something. I mean, there's no reason not to. I, I trust him, so we can give him a, a white primed mini because I know he likes to do uh, slap chop stuff. So maybe he can mess around with that and you can talk to him. We can probably do that as well. So, But all right, thanks so much, guys. We're going to call it for today. We will see you tomorrow again at the exact same time, uh, 10 a.m. PST, whatever time that is for you. Adios. Thanks, everybody.